G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Word 2013 video. This time around we are talking about page layout and let's get straight to it. Let's click on the page layout tab. We're going to be focusing on this page setup group right here. Paragraph I'm not going to be talking about because I covered that in the paragraph and spacing video and the arrange I talked about in the picture and video tutorial. So let's come back over here. The first one we're going to talk about is obviously the margins on the far left button. Before I click on it, let's talk about what a margin is. So you can see this grayed out section on the top of your left ruler, on the bottom of your left ruler, and the left and the right of your top ruler. These are your margins. They specify the areas in which text cannot appear. Funnily enough, pictures that are set to appear above text or tight, things like that, are allowed to appear in those margins. Just be careful. Okay. So to adjust those margins, you simply click on the button and you select which style you want. By default, they are a one inch all around or in the metric system as normal people use them is 2.54 I mean no offense to that it's just I'm Australian that's the metric system that's what we use these are roughly what you'd see in most documents okay you can obviously choose narrow if you need more spacing around your document and you simply select it those settings get applied you get a half an inch or 1.27 centimeters okay and you can obviously choose the other ones moderate wide and mirrored never had to use any of the other ones. I've used narrow a couple of times when my document needs to fit on a couple of pages and I've only I've got too much content basically. If you don't like any of those settings you can always choose custom margins. Okay? And they allow you to adjust the top, bottom, left, right margins individually. So I can set 2 centimeters for the top, not 12. I could set 3 centimeters to the bottom, but I have 2 to the left, 1 to the right. And I've even got this gutter option. Now the gutter is used for booklets and textbooks where you want a bit more space down the middle of your document. So if I click 2 centimeters, I don't know how I did 22 there, and just click off, you'll see that it adds this hazy sort of section on the left hand. So that's the gutter that it's adding to my document. Let's say that's all right. Let's click OK. You can see now that the left hand section's got a big gutter for each page and the right hand section he's quite small okay that's pretty much margins done and dusted let's send him back to normal and let's get rid of the gutter because I don't like it I'm not gonna have to use it and there you go we're back to default alright the next thing I'm gonna skip over orientation we're gonna talk about him in a bit more detail in a second size is a very very easy one if you are working with A4 so the normal size piece of white paper, leave it on A4. If you're working on anything else, choose what size it is. You should hopefully know what size it is. If it doesn't appear in this list, just like the margins, you can click on this option down the bottom. And there are a lot more options to choose from. You can even set your own custom width and height. Okay, so if I click on size, click on A3, it makes the whole page much larger to reflect that. Even the ruler is updated to reflect that I've got a much larger piece of paper available to me. I'm going to set this back to A4. I've rarely had to use that. I've used A3 maybe once, and there are other times where I've used a letter size. Okay, But that is literally it. I've only used those two. I've never had to change it. Set it before you start working on your document, because otherwise you might have a few, a lot of adjustments probably, after the fact. Okay. Moving on, we have columns, and this one's a little bit more interesting than the margin and size, thank God. If we click on him, you, you can see we've got options for different columns for our whole document. Now, if you were going to work on a newspaper page, or article for that matter, you would choose this kind of styling, okay? You probably wouldn't, if you're a professional journalist, you wouldn't use Word, but just for, let's say you're a high school student and you need to do a news article, this is a great way to go. So let's say, for instance, I want two columns in my document, select two, and you'll notice this grey section appears in the top of your ruler. <clears throat> this indicates the middle of the columns. So what's going to happen is as you start typing and filling up this column, it's going to start there and stop at this line here. That's the border. And when it hits the bottom, mar uh, bottom page margin, it's going to jump over to the second column straight away. Now, I don't have any text and I want to reflect that, so let's show you a trick. I'm going to type in equals rand 10. And when I press enter, Word's going to type in 10 paragraphs for me. So you can see how that works. As soon as my paragraph hits the bottom margin of this page, it wraps up to the second column over here. 
And that's very, very easy to use. It doesn't take much effort to do that. Okay, so that's pretty much columns. If you want three, select three. If you want one on the left that's smaller, select that. If you want one on the right, select that. It's entirely up to you what you want to use. That's how you use columns. There are more columns. You can actually select five columns, lines in between them, things like that. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. I suggest you ever play around with that because it's out of the scope of this video for today. I'm going to leave it on two columns. I'm going to show you a couple of things now. We're on to breaks, okay? I've used breaks a few times in my videos for page breaks specifically, okay? To show you what that does, if I go to breaks, you've got six, or oh, sorry, seven options here. The main ones are the first three. Let's say, for instance, I click on page break. It automatically will leave white space for the rest of the page and jump down to the next page and start again. You'll also notice that the columns carries over to the second page and it will even continue for the rest of the document so long as it's set to two columns. Okay, So that's a quick example. Now if you don't know, it's pretty hard to tell that there's a page break in there since there's so much white space. If you want to be able to see these breaks, you have to go to Home and you have to click this one here which is Show and Hide Special Characters. And there's my page break. You can actually see what's going on here. Okay. This little symbol here indicates an enter key, a little dot indicates a space, and an arrow indicates a tab across the page. Okay, So, let me get rid of the page break for the moment. That's a quick, easy way to see them and delete them. Okay, I'm going to show you the next, page, uh, the next break, which is a column break. Let's say, for instance, there's too much text on the left column, and I need to get some of it onto the right-hand column. Let, this paragraph starts here but finishes over here. So what I do is just put your cursor on the left of the two word page or breaks and click on column. And you'll see it puts in a column break and automatically pushes all of the text onto the next column. Okay, in another way you can use that, let's say I don't want any content to appear in this column, you can always put a column break in and it automatically skips that column and starts going in the right hand column over this side. So there are breaks there. The next one, text wrapping, I don't really like it. I think it's quite ugly. But realistically, what it's supposed to do, you can see the little icon here. It's supposed to give you a little caption on the left hand side and then allocate you text to wrap over on the right hand side. To be honest, I've never actually got this working. So I know what it's supposed to do, I just don't know how to do it. I want to focus on these guys because if you watched the last video, we talked about headers and footers. I'm just going to quickly delete a few things. Okay, there we go. Let me just quickly turn, double click to get inside my header. And I'm going to type in hello. And you'll see it appears on the second page as well. Now, jump back to the document. You can see hello is still there. Let's say, for instance, I want the first page and the second page to have different headers and footers. Now I showed you one way of doing it in the previous video. I'm going to show you another way of doing it in this video. And this can be applied to as many pages or sections as they're going to now be called in your document as you want. I'm going to go to Page Layout, Breaks, and this next page. What it does is it puts in a section break. Okay, And if we go to the header, you'll see it says Section 1 and Section 2. Now if I delete this hello, Oh, I've got to click that button, do I? Hello, up here. What's doing down here? You can see these headers are no longer linked. Okay, but interestingly enough, I go to the next page, you still see what's doing. All right, that's still like how we did in the last video. I'm going to show you one more thing. Go to the third page. Let's say, no, nah, don't like that. Page layout. Put in the next page break. You'll see we're in section three now. That means, oh, sorry, untick that. You'll see now we have three different headers and footers. There's the first section, second section goes for the two pages, and there's my third section. Now, if your headers and footers change that much, that's the technique you're going to use. It is actually quite difficult to get it working flawlessly. As you can see, I had a few little snags on it as well. But essentially the next one allow you to do a continuous without putting a page break in, and even an odd page break, 
same so, or next section for an even number and an odd numbered page. Okay, play around with them. I don't, don't want to describe them anymore because we've talked about them enough. All right. Second last thing we're going to talk about this video, we're going to skip over hyphenation, okay, because it's exactly how it sounds. It hyphenates words automatically if you choose automatic. Line numbers. If you would like each line to be numbered in your page. So if I click continuous, you'll see that every single line includes a line number. I've never ever used this. I've never had to use this. I've only just seen it in the last couple of minutes. If you go to print, it exists on your printed document as well. So be careful of that, okay? I don't know when you would use this. Sometimes it might be handy, but to be honest, I've never had to use it. I'm never probably going to use it, to be honest. Maybe sometimes, we'll see. All right, now we're gonna to get to the interesting part of the video. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a fresh document for this one, just so I can demonstrate this a little bit easier. So first of all, I'm gonna need a crap load of text. 50 paragraphs should probably do it. How many pages has it given me? Five. That's not too bad. Okay. This bit here, orientation. So orientation allows you to change between a portrait and a landscape layout. So for instance, we're currently in a portrait, which means up and down, or we can change to landscape, which is left and right. The only thing is when we swap that option, it applies to the entire document. Okay. And a lot of times, you may want a lot of your pages to be in portrait and then every now and again you may want a landscape page and then switch back to portrait, okay? Or vice versa for that matter. So what I'm going to quickly do is show you a very easy way to do that. We're going to change it back to portrait and you'll notice every page is in portrait again. What we want to do is utilize those breaks that we had in the previous document and we're going to use a continuous break for this one. So if we go to header and footer for a second, you'll see header and footer just say header and footer. That means they're all the exact same. Let's go up here, let's page layout and insert a continuous break, okay? If I turn on my special symbols, you can see there's the section break. And if I go to header and footer, it now says section one and section two. So let's quickly click on the second page, which is in section two, remember that? Page layout, swap the orientation so the second section all becomes landscape. So you'll notice, First page portrait, the rest of the document landscape. And that's exactly how we probably want it in this particular instance. Now, let's do that again and make sure, excuse me, that the second and third page are the only ones in landscape. So what we're gonna do is come down to the bottom of the third page, insert another continuous break, delete that empty line it puts in there, and then swap it back to portrait, and there you go. So section one, is portrait section two is in landscape section three is in portrait once again that's it for today everybody if you like the video if you have a comment to make or a request please put it in the comments down the bottom okay otherwise i'll see you in the next video we're going to be talking about templates okay thank you very much for watching everybody i'll see you later